His opponent confirms if he is D-Day or not and tries to punch Dong Yu, which he evades easily. Hyunsu claims he guessed his identity right away after seeing the picture on the match list and continued to punch Dong Yu while he blocked it with his hands. While exchanging fists, Dong Yu questions if he is the person under the name Great Disaster. He denies it and says Dong Yu doesn't realize there are many people who want to beat you. Continuing their exchange of fists, Yang Hyunsu says not to show off just because he started working out just for a couple of months. Dong Yu catches his fist and says that it's wrong to lower the value of their effort by calling it just. The feeling Dong Yu felt when his breathing was high still remains vividly. The anger and regret. Dong Yu thinks he has provided him with an opening for his low kick on his own and gave a swift elbow cut on his face when he was about to kick him, making all the crowd cheer upon him after knocking him down. The referee starts the countdown and announces the winner of the round, Kim Dong Yu. Dong Yu thinks that he'll be stronger so that no one can kill him anymore. The coach reveals to the director and the other person that Dong Yu knocked his opponent down with one shot and won his first match. The director claims that it is possible if it is Dong Yu. The other person says to the coach that he was the one who spars with him every day and he must know that in a general competition with high-ranking athletes, it is a big possibility for them to win even if it is an amateur range. The coach tells him he will understand if he goes to see his next match. When the director tells him to drop him off at his home, he says it would be more comfortable for him because they're the same age. When Dong Yu is about to leave the gym, the senior offers him a ride home, while the coach and the director are fooling around without cleaning. After reaching the destination, Dong Yu offers his thanks to him. This act makes Yoon Suk inside Dong Yu feel the youngest of them, since he never had anyone to give him a ride since his elementary school. He congratulates again on his K.O and tells him to keep it up until the finals. When he responds, he says not to take any pressure and to do it comfortably. Dong Yu claims there is nothing wrong in trying it and sounds interesting too. He asks Dong Yu if he is planning to do a face reveal to his subscribers. He questions if there are many people who are coming to see his face. He partially denies it and says that they can deal with it and not to worry about it. The reason he asked is because he thought it'd be comfortable to reveal his face, which actually bothers Dong Yu. While leaving, he says not to do a face reveal if it bothers him. Walking towards his apartment, he thinks about the fact that he cannot hide forever, and the usual mask doesn't provide him a lot of security since Dong Hyun and Yang Hyun Su recognized him right away. He decides to reveal his face when the competition ends since he cannot have people in the gym keep his identity a secret for a longer time. His sister addresses him as older brother, which creeps him out and says to her that it feels cringe when she calls him. When she reacts saying that it's his cute little sister who is calling him, he acts softly and with sparkling eyes he says sorry to her and acts much more cringier, which makes her react in a wild way and laughs at his gross expression. He asks if she ate dinner, to which she replies that she will be eating with her friend. When she asks about the competition's result, he asks her if there are any good restaurants around the venue since he has to go three or more times to eat. Listening to that, she jumps with happiness. In those two weeks, he studied for the upcoming real estate agent license exam and won two matches with 2K.O's. After that, he has won the eight rounds in the quarterfinals, which makes him to advance to the semifinals. The coach asked him if he could win all the matches with a knockout. Dong Yu replied that he would try to do it because instructor Dong Hyun told him to win with all knockouts. The coach left the room and said he would be in the car and told him to come out when he finished his preparation. A person approached Dong Yu, shook his hand, and said he had a great time watching all of his matches and praised him. Dong Yu thanked him and asked who he was. The person replied that he was Go Sung Ju, one of the participants. Sung Ju mentioned that they were not matched for the next round and said they might meet as opponents in the finals. He claims he has seen the way Dong Yu carefully examines his opponents to finish them in one shot when he sees an opening. When Dong Yu thinks if Sung Ju is a fan of him, he continues to offer his thanks for displaying such incredible matches. Their conversation is interrupted by a hysterical laugh from a person. He asks Sung Ju the reason for his flattering words towards Dong Yu. Dong Yu confirms with Sung Ju if he knew this person, which he denies. The person says Sung Ju might be praising Dong Yu just to make him hit less. When Dong Yu tries to clarify, he points out at Sung Ju and says that he has heard about Sung Ju being a human sandbag at the gym and questions his reason to enter the competition is he doesn't want to get hit. 
Dong Yu says he has gone too far with his words and claims the competition is to help them learn the skills. The person laughs and says he has been trying to learn the skills for 10 long years. Dong Yu thinks there is no person who can match him in terms of tenacity. The person claims that Sung Ju only knows how to get hit and be on the back of people and questions how he did get to the semifinals. Dong Yu gets back at him saying that he has come all the way to trash talk about him and it seems his speciality is running mouth. Dong Yu calls him a mouth fighter. When he tries to scream at him, Dong Yu says dogs bark louder when they are scared. The person tries to get back at him. Dong Yu makes him even more angry to the point that he starts to swing his arm towards Dong Yu. Right at the moment, one of the officials stops him from causing any trouble. The official addresses the person as Park Mun Su and tells him to get ready for his match and clarifies that any fist fights between contestants will result in disqualification. Mun Su exits the room, cursing both Sung Ju and Dong Yu. Sung Ju thanks Dong Yu for taking his side and tells him the reason he didn't speak against his words is because what Mun Su said wasn't particularly wrong. Dong Yu tells him not to demean himself since he has done some great things that others cannot do. After their exchange, Dong Yu walks to the car in the parking lot. Instructor Hyun Chiol questions his late arrival, to which Dong Yu replies that he has met some other participants. While driving away, Hyun Chiol asks him how the other participants were. After Dong Yu recalls his exchange, Hyun Chiol gets worked up due to the behavior of Park Mun Su. Hyun Chiol asks Dong Yu if he knew the gym he came from, to complain about his behavior and teach him a lesson. When Dong Yu says they will meet him again, Hyun Chiol claims he will teach him a lesson. When Dong Yu asks how he will do it, he replies that he will ask him for a spar and beat him. After a while, Hyun Chiol wakes up the sleeping Dong Yu in the passenger seat. Dong Yu looks outside the car to see his house and not the gym. When he questions Hyun, he says that his real estate exam is tomorrow and asks him to refrain from training. He hands Dong Yu a box of glutinous rice cake and taffy. Dong Yu asks when did he prepare something like this. Hyun Chiol says that the director and other instructors pooled their money to buy it, and everyone's been cheering for him. Hyun asks Dong Yu to get off the car quickly as he has to go back to the gym. After getting down the car, he thinks the exercise that he has started to fight against John Yong Wan has helped him save Choi Ji Dong and most importantly he has people that support him and not unlike when he was Yoon Suk where everyone was trying to pull him down by any means possible. The reason for learning martial arts still remains the same and the real estate agent exam that takes place tomorrow. The next morning, he walks out of his apartment to the exam venue and wonders why his sister Dong Wa has slept on the sofa. He places her on his bed and writes a small note saying that he will be back. Meanwhile, at the amateur competition, Park Mun Su is fishing against Sung Ju and is dominating the match. He asks Sung Ju to flatter him with the same words so that he can be gentle for the rest of the match. When Sung Ju disagrees, Mun Su begins to act violently towards him. This shocks the entire audience. The director who is watching the match in the stadium thinks his brutality is too much and the referee didn't stop the match web he had plenty of time to do. The director thinks a participant with a wicked personality has made it into the finals. Dong Yu was taking an exam. He looked at the question paper and thought it was too hard. He noticed that the other people taking the exam looked worried too. Dong Yu started his exam and felt interested. He finished it earlier than he thought he would. He listened to other candidates talking about how they messed up the exam and were unsure of their answers. A person came around handing out the answer key. Dong Yu thought that people who failed the test would probably go to their academy because the test was difficult. He thought this might be a good opportunity for the academy officials. Dong Yu felt bad that someone's misfortune could be an opportunity for someone else but was glad he didn't have to search for the answer key himself. Dong Yu sat in a cafe and thought he should check his answers carefully. He knew he wouldn't fail the exam because he had Yoon Suk's memories. He decided to calculate how many points he would get and was surprised by the result. In the meantime, Duck Bay went live and said hello to his followers. He told them that he had missed them and had come to see them for a short while. One of his followers asked if he had come live to talk to D-Day, which was Dong Yu's stream. Duck Bay said that he has good intuition. He claimed he couldn't stream because he was busy with his match. He added that he wanted to see D-Day working out not for his body but because he was determined. Duck Bay said he felt satisfied watching him and almost felt like he could become a bodybuilder too. He scratched his head because he didn't have a ticket and wanted to see the match. 
Suddenly, a viewer asked him if he would come to watch the match if he had a ticket, to which Duck Bay said yes. The viewer named Icandy Dongung said he could get him a ticket and asked him to trust him. That person turned out to be Coach Dong Hyun, who was watching the stream and sending messages while cleaning the gym. Suddenly, the director hit him for not cleaning the ring. Coach Hyun explained that he was on a quick break and said he was encouraging some people who wanted to watch Dong Gyu's match. The director wanted to know if it was possible to watch both matches at the same time. Coach Hyun told him that the semifinals and finals were on the same day and only the players would be going. Coach Hyun was worried about Dong Gyu's exam more than his match. The director was confident that Dong Yu would do well on his exam and told Hyun not to worry too much. Hyun thought that the director favored Dong Yu too much. The director hit him and said that Dong Yu was much cuter than Hyun, who was a troublemaker. He told Hyun to hurry up and clean the area. At home, Dong Wu was watching her favorite show on TV and waiting for her brother, Dong Yu, to come back. She was excited to hear from him and was hoping that he would tell her how he did on his test that day. Suddenly, Dong Yu arrived home. Dong Wu was surprised to see him late and asked him why he was so behind schedule. However, Dong Yu didn't say anything and simply walked into his room with a sad expression on his face. Dong Wu became worried and thought that he might have failed his exam. She was concerned that he might go back to his old ways. Dong Wu decided to do something to help her brother. As she was about to enter his room, Dong Yu opened the door and handed her his test paper. Dong Wa took it and realized that he had not passed the test. Dong Wa glanced at Dong Yu's question paper and wondered if the marks on it meant he had failed. She approached him and noticed his disheartened expression. She felt the need to cheer him up. She ran towards him, embraced him, and reassured him that failing the test was normal, even after a year of studying. She praised his hard work. Dong Yu pushed her away, asking her to stop pretending. He claimed he had only gotten two questions wrong and needed no comfort. Dong Wa insisted he was lying. She showed him his paper, pointing out the questions he had marked incorrectly. She reminded him of how devastated he had looked when he came home. Dong Yu admitted he had mistakenly scored the B-type test as an A-type, leading to confusion while grading. When Dong Wa asked if he had passed, he confirmed that he had. Dong Wa jumped onto the sofa, relieved that Dong Yu had only gotten two questions wrong. Dong Yu boasted about being handsome, good at sports, and intelligent, so there was no need to worry about him. Dong Wa agreed and prepared a box of chicken as a special treat for him that night. Dong Yu thanked her for the offer, but he asked her to wait until after his final match because he needed to watch his diet. Dong Wa asked if he could make an exception for that day, but Dong Yu refused, saying he couldn't eat too much. He plans to eat plain chicken breast, which he said was tasty in its own way. With a sad look, he said he preferred salad to crispy chicken, ramen with spicy broth, or pizza with cheese. Dong Wa decided not to argue with him and asked if he would announce that he passed the exam on his stream. Dong Yu said he would announce it once it was official. Dong Wa wanted her to inform his gym buddies about it so she could brag about her brother, to which Dong Gyu agreed. She called the director and told him everything. Seeing her happy lifted his spirits. He looked at the picture of her with Dong Yu and wondered if Kim Dong Yu had felt the same. He hears her telling every specific detail of his mistake to the director. Dong Yu checked the answers on his computer and found that his hunch on the official answers were right and some were repeated. He read the gossip online because some of the questions they got wrong might be correct. Dong Yu was fighting in his semifinal match. He kept blocking his opponent's attacks. Dong Yu saw an opportunity, quickly dodged the attack, and kicked his opponent in the face, knocking him out. The audience cheered for another K.0 win and Dong Yu advanced to the finals. Duck Bay, who was in the audience, cheered for Dong Yu and was relieved to see D Day's match in person. He was impressed by Dong Yu's winning streak, all ending in knockouts. Someone next to him mentioned that the finals were on the same day and Dong Yu was at a disadvantage because the other finalists had more time to rest before the match. The audience beside Duck Bay discusses the event organizer, a prominent figure known for his interest in martial arts. They also mention the organizer's questionable tactics and the difficulty of obtaining tickets, even for amateur competitions. As Dong Yu exits the ring, the crowd begins to cheer for him, using his streaming name, D-Day. 
Dong Gyu feels a mix of gratitude and embarrassment at the sight of such a large crowd. As he wonders how they learned about the matches, the director reveals that Dong Hyun had donated his ticket to the Duck Bay guy. When Dong Gyu questioned his attendance, the director explained that the director normally comes on days like this. Meanwhile, at a corner, Coach Hyun Chiol and Dong Hyun stood with a banner proclaiming Kim Dong Gyu, the human weapon of Park Hoon's gym, was fighting. Beside them, his sister Dong Wa held a smaller banner declaring him the best athlete nurtured by Park Hoon's gym. Dong Gyu wondered if such statements were appropriate for such an occasion. She ran towards him, exclaiming that he looked amazing. When he inquired about her peculiar banner, she responded that as a supportive sister, she had to come and cheer him on for his semi-final and final matches. She then introduced her friend Jai Hai to him. A beautiful woman approached Dong Gyu, gently stroking her hair as she greeted him. She mentioned that it had been a while since they last saw each other. Dong Gyu was curious if she knew the late Kim Dong Gyu and stared at her intently, making her feel slightly awkward. His sister, Dong Wa, punched him and asked if he planned to keep staring at her and prompted him to greet their guest. Dong Gyu was surprised to learn that his sister had a friend. When Dong Wa reacted, he commented that he thought she had no friends because she was always lazy at home. Jai Hai pointed out that Dong Wa did have many friends. Dong Wa acknowledged this, saying that Dong Yu hadn't noticed because he wasn't paying attention to her in the past. As Dong Wa continued to speak, Dong Yu interrupted and told his sister's friend Jai Hai that she was her friend from middle school and had frequently visited their house, often saying hello. However, Dong Wa's friend corrected him, saying that her greetings were one-sided and that Dong Yu had always ignored her. Dong Wa asked her brother, Dong Yu, to pay attention to her since he was about to become famous. Dong Yu tried to figure out what she was talking about, but Dong Wa denied everything. Jai Hai said that Dong Yu had changed a lot. Dong Yu agreed, saying that change was inevitable. When Jai Hai was about to say something, Dong Wa interrupted her and took her to buy some snacks. Director Park spoke to Dong Yu, saying he should have said something about his dating status. Dong Yu remembered that the chairman of SH Real Estate Company had also used children to bring down his opponents, so Dong Yu decided not to focus on dating. Director Park, however, requested that Dong Yu bring a woman with him on a show to attract more female fans, which would in turn increase the number of customers coming to the gym. The director warned Dong Yu to be more cautious this time because his next opponent's gym was known for underhanded tactics. He emphasized the importance of staying focused and winning the match, as he was determined to do whatever it took to secure victory. Dong Yu sensed that the director had placed a bet on him and inquired about their strategy for the upcoming game. In response, the director expressed uncertainty, but he was confident that Dong Yu would ultimately win by knockout. Dong Yu and his coach, Director Park, discussed the upcoming match. Director Park advised him not to be discouraged and to give it his all. The match began, and as Dong Yu suspected, his opponent was Park Moon Su. However, Park Moon Su was not an easy opponent. He was quick and always on the offensive. Dong Yu skillfully dodged his punches and kicks. Park Moon Su wanted to break Dong Yu's will during the match. He landed a punch on Park Moon Su's left torso, which he couldn't block. Dong Yu realized that his opponent didn't reach the finals by cheating. He also noticed that his opponent wasn't trying to block his punches and tried to move back quickly. Park Moon Su then swung his arms towards Dong Yu, causing him to fall to the ground. When Dong Yu stood up, his opponent's fingers were near his eyes, attempting to poke him. Dong Yu managed to evade this attack, but it caused a slight bleed. A drop of blood dripped from Dong Yu's face near his eye and fell onto the floor. His opponent was determined to win at any cost and it became evident when he almost poked Dong Yu's eye. Dong Yu was surprised that his opponent would resort to such unsportsmanlike behavior. When his opponent asked about the strength of his punch, Dong Yu compared it to the sharpness of a nail. He glanced at the referee and suspected that he hadn't noticed the eye-poking attempt because he didn't stop the fight. The opponent warned Dong Yu not to get distracted and charged at him. Dong Yu recognized it as a predictable move and planned to avoid it while preparing to counterattack. However, the blood in his eye hindered his ability to dodge, and he was unable to evade the attack. Moon Su pinned Dong Yu to the ground and started punching him. He told Dong Yu to laugh at him like he did the last time. Dong Wa couldn't bear to watch her brother getting hurt, 
so she turned away and told the director that she couldn't watch it. The director reminded her that Dong Yu was a tough opponent. Meanwhile, Dong Yu kicked Moon Su on his rear side, causing him to lose his balance. Dong Yu then quickly grabbed Moon Su and pinned him down, causing the referee to start counting. Just before the count of one, Dong Yu released Moon Su and stood up. Moon Su got angry and threatened Dong Yu, saying that he would make him regret letting him go. Dong Yu answered that he was determined to win the match with a knockout since he had come so far. In the past, Director Park advised Dong Yu that he had the potential to become the strongest, but his tendency to get too excited during fights was a problem. Director Park explained that when someone gets too excited, their vision becomes unfocused and they lose clarity. He advised Dong Yu to remain calm during fights and, if that was difficult, he should try to make his opponent lose their composure. Following this advice, Dong Yu quickly approached Moon Su and knocked him out with a punch, winning the match. After some time, Duck Bei started his stream outside the gym where Dong Yu trained. He was excited about working with Dong Yu, also known as D-Day. When he went inside the gym, he was greeted by the director, Park Hoon. Park Hoon invited him into the gym and gave him a tour. After a brief act of the director as a salesperson, he knocked on the door of the dressing room, which was a signal for Dong Yu to come out. Duck Bei greeted him and began talking to him. He started the conversation by congratulating Dong Yu on completing his first amateur martial arts competition. When the chat reached the topic of his performance, Duck Bei asked if he could share his thoughts with the audience. Dong Yu humbly responded that it would be an honor for Duck Bei himself to announce the outcome of his match. Suddenly, a person in the chat commented that Dong Yu must have lost the match because he had a band-aid on his forehead. In a live broadcast, a chat participant named Gamek Jang expressed pride in watching a baby pig work out. However, he comments that when the pig lost weight, it became arrogant. Dong Yu and his coach sat in the gym for the live broadcast after a competition. Gamek Jang accused Dong Yu of creating dull content to attract viewers. Another individual joined the conversation, questioning why anyone would care if Dong Yu won the competition or not, given his hidden appearance expressed disappointment in the quality of Dong Yu's match, calling it a waste of time. Dong Yu took off his mask and announced that he had asked Duck Bei to make the announcement, but he felt the need to do it himself. He greeted everyone live and introduced himself as D-Day. Everyone got excited when they saw his face, and some even said that he looked tired because of the scars. However, Gamek Jang, a particular individual, was not amused by the face reveal. Dong Yu then revealed that he had both good and bad news. Gamek Jang believed that Dong Yu couldn't have any good news. Surprisingly, Dong Yu announced that he had won the martial arts competition and ranked first, despite training for only three months. Duck Bei, who was standing beside him, agreed and confirmed that he had witnessed the match himself. When Gamek Jang called it nonsense, Duck Bei urged everyone on the chat to check the internet for news about Dong Yu winning all his matches with knockout victories. Gamek Jang was shocked when he saw the results of his internet search. He had achieved something he never thought possible. In the Steam chat, he claimed that Dong Yu had been training in secret for over three months and that this was all a setup. Dong Yu asked them if they remembered the bet he had announced earlier. Duck Bei responded by reminding them of the bet. The bet was that if anyone could bring proof that Dong Yu was working in other gyms, they would get all the profits from his streams. But if no one could bring any proof within the stipulated time, there would no longer be any criticism of him. Dong Yu then challenged Gamek Jang to a face-to-face -face talk and sparring match. He also named three other people who had been criticizing him and told them to come to Park Hoon's gym. Gamek Jang and the other two people went to the gym. Three men who came to have fun were defeated by Dong Yu in a fight. One of them, Gamek Jang, was easily beaten and asked for a rematch because he was not focused the first time. He was upset about being defeated by someone who had only been training for three months. The other two men were also defeated, and Dong Yu made them hold up a sign apologizing to the livestream audience. Gamek Jang remembered his past when he tried to become a martial arts fighter but did not succeed and felt frustrated. Dong Yu realized that Gamek Jang's hate speech was due to him feeling insecure. Dong Yu decided to ignore him because he knew he couldn't change him even if he talked to him. The streamer Duck Bay cheered for Dong Yu, but the audience was bored because the fight was over too quickly. When Dong Yu was talking to his audience, 
The director interrupted him and told him to greet a guest who had arrived for him. The director then went to check on Choi Min Suk, who was Gamek Jang. The guest gave Dong Yu a card and invited him to join his gym, where Dong Yu's last opponent Park Moon Su had trained. Dong Yu refused the offer, saying that he didn't want to go to a place that lacked quality. The guest warned Dong Yu to watch his words if he wanted to stay in the martial arts industry. Dong Yu responded that he didn't plan to continue doing martial arts. The guest, who introduced himself as Park Ji Tae, told Dong Yu to contact him if he changed his mind. After Park Ji Tae left, Dong Yu received a call informing him that they had found the person they were looking for. At some location, a middle-aged man in rags was kidnapped. A middle-aged man was attempting to recall that he was trying to meet someone to borrow money for betting. Suddenly, he had a strange feeling that he couldn't move or see anything. In reality, his body was buried deep in the ground, leaving only his face exposed. His eyes and mouth were tied up, preventing him from speaking. When he tried to make a sound, the person beside him with a shovel alerted another person that he was awake. The man inside the ground desperately called for help, promising to repay his debt no matter the cost. Someone called Seo Young Du's name and asked if he had lost all his money gambling. Another voice reminded him that he had a family and children. The middle-aged man regained consciousness and tried to call for help. The two voices discussed their plan to catch them and considered the amount of interest they should ask for before contacting them. The second voice mentioned that Seo Young Du's daughter was only 20 years old and had been sent to live in Japan. Both the voices commented that gambling is a dangerous game, capable of causing a person to sell even their own family. They planned to leave the middle-aged man and go away, saying that wild animals would take care of him later. The middle-aged man started thinking about his wife and daughter and cried in pain, realizing that he could have paid off all his debts if he had stopped gambling earlier. He then realized that his family might have survived if he had never started gambling at all. Meanwhile, Dong Yu and Choi Ji Dong watched the buried man from a distance. Ji Dong thought about what it meant to teach him a lesson with his body. Two hours before, Ji Dong talks to Dong Yu about identifying Seo Young Du and about placing him back at a place. Dong Yu asks Ji Dong if he knew the similarity between a drug addict and a gambler. Ji Dong guesses that they use their money recklessly. Dong Yu denies it and clarifies that both of them can't see what's in front of them and are blinded by the desire to do whatever they want. When Ji Dong asks the way to get him to do what they want, Dong Yu says they cannot teach him a lesson with words but can teach one through his body. Ji Dong is devastated to listen to his plan and asks if that's the reason he asked for a van. Dong Yu wants the whole act to look realistic and make him trust them. He asks Ji Dong to get prepared for kidnapping since they are near to his location. Currently, from the shelter's glass window, Ji Dong keeps an eye on Seo Young Du. He asks Dong Yu if it's okay to leave him in his current state. Dong Yu responds that words alone cannot rehabilitate drug addicts. He decides to leave Seo Young Du in the same condition for two full days. When Ji Dong expresses concern that Seo Young Du might die, Dong Yu reminds him not to feel sorry for gamblers as it's of no use. Dong Yu points out that Seo Young Du has disregarded his family and gambled recklessly. He emphasizes that humans are stronger than they appear. He shares that when he was known as Yoon Suk, he managed to survive even when he was being strangled. Ji Dong was terrified after hearing about the treatment. Dong Yu told him to think of it as a favor for treating him if he felt sorry for Seo Young. He further explained that it could be seen as a therapy that helps traumatize people by sending their consciousness to their inner control, which could help them live a better life, especially for gambling addicts. Dong Yu asked Ji Dong to give Seo Young time to contact his inner consciousness so that he could change. When Ji Dong asked if the method was effective, Dong Yu replied that while the method was strict and harsh, he was not a doctor and could not guarantee its effectiveness. Dong Yu explained that when someone is close to death, they experience life in the most extraordinary way, and even if they get to live again, they will never forget that moment. Dong Yu requested the keys from Ji Dong as he needed to leave. He told him that he would return the following day to check on him. Dong Yu warned Ji Dong not to help or move him while he was away, or he would be the one buried. Ji Dong spoke his thoughts aloud, saying that Dong Yu was being harsh. Dong Yu asked him to check on Seo Young occasionally to see if she was alive. He mentioned that he had heard there would be light rain the next day due to the warming winter weather. 
Dong Yu expressed his hope that Seo Young would stay alive as his family was waiting for him. G.I. Dong asked if Dong Yu had a driver's license, to which Dong Yu replied that he did not. 